Hey everyone, Justin here. So, talking about trying to do astronomy affordably, one of the best ways to go is to get yourself a telescope. But of course, look for it used. You may have to do a little bit of maintenance, but it's actually not that hard. Today we're going to discuss that. I have this new to me Skywatcher 10 inch reflector with German equatorial mount that I got for a really good price. So today I'm going to clean the mirror and then I'm going to collimate the mirrors to make sure that everything is accurate. So let's get started. All right. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is actually clean this mirror. And right now it can be a little deceiving. It doesn't look that dirty. But let's shine a light down here and you're going to see the dust reflect that light pretty strongly. And you'll be able to see how dirty it actually is. Pretty crazy, isn't it? Super hazy. So we're going to take that mirror out very gently and give it a clean. So one of the first things we're going to do is actually take the tube off of the mount and then we're going to set it down somewhere nice and safe where uh, I'm not going to be prone to drop the mirror and break it because then I would cry. Then we're going to remove a series of screws all the way around the tube and then this whole white collar here is going to slide out with the mirror assembly. Then we can remove the mirror from this mount Take it, we're going to use some tape to mark where it's at uh, on the mount so that we can line it back up just in case that makes a difference. And then we'll clean the mirror. Okay, so we went ahead and moved the telescope indoors. I have it sitting on top of a rug in the living room and up against the couch just so it's not prone to fall over anything. And if I feel like I'm gonna drop it, I can just launch it over to the couch and hopefully the cat will catch it. I'm just kidding. Um, but also I've marked on the telescope, uh, on the body and on the mirror holder uh, just to line it up. Just in case that matters, uh, it's always a good idea to do, to kind of keep it clocked. I went ahead and removed all the screws. So now we're ready to take this out. I've already cleared my walk path to make sure there's no trip hazards in the way, as this is very delicate, and again, it'll be a sad day if you break it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. And there we are. Beautiful shot of the camera. But if I get this on edge long, you should be able to see... You can actually see the shadow in the dust along the mirror. So let's go clean this bad boy. Once you got your mirror over to your work area, you're going to need a few other things. A Phillips screwdriver to remove the screws for the brackets that hold the mirror in. And we're going to talk about those here in a bit. You're going to need some distilled water. This is for rinsing off the mirror after we've cleaned it. Uh, distilled water doesn't have any minerals in it, so the idea is it reduces mirror, uh, I'm sorry, uh, water spots. Uh, we'll need a little bit of uh, Dawn dish soap. Uh, we want some soapy water just to help break the surface tension and everything and help the dust get cleaned off. And then we want some cotton balls. So that's primarily what we're going to be using. And we're going to make a little water bath in a Tupperware tub. Uh, and then we're going to set the mirror down inside that bath and clean it off with the cotton balls. So let's get started with that step next. Now it is time to actually remove the mirror. First thing we're going to do is get a Sharpie. And again, just make a reference point between the holder and the mirror. Next, we're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the brackets. There's two Phillips screws per bracket. There's six brackets total. So I prefer to use a stubby Phillips so I have a little bit more control over it instead of having a longer shank um, because we really want to be very mindful that we do not damage the mirror. So I'm going to go ahead and start removing these now. And I'm going to temporarily place all these back inside their holders and just give them a couple of turns of the thread to hold them in place while we then work on 
the mirror itself. We're going to set that aside for now. All right. Next, we're going to move our water. And I'm just using a drawer out of a Tupperware set of drawers. So I don't have to fill up a sink. It's not going into the metal of the sink, anything like that. It should be relatively safe. Now we're just going to do a few squirts of dish soap. I was kind of uh, running low. I'm not actually putting much in there. I'll kind of agitate that, get that mixed in. It should look something like that. Just some bubbles. You don't want it to be insane because soap can actually have more stuff stick to it. So we want it to be kind of a light, a light coating. Next, we're going to take our mirror. Now, be very careful. Because now your hands are wet with soapy water. And we're just going to slowly set this down into the water. And we'll get some of our cotton balls. And people all kind of have a different method. The one thing I will say is cotton balls are very cheap. So use a lot. Don't be afraid to use plenty of them and not keep reusing one over and over again. Um, once you wipe it, it's kind of considered spent. So have your trash can nearby and ready to go so you can throw away the cotton balls as you go. Now, a lot of people do this in different ways. Some people wipe out from the center. Some people do a cross hatch pattern all the way across. I'm not entirely too sure it matters. Whichever one makes you feel best, uh, uh, most comfortable, uh, or whatever is in your actual manual. This is a general way to clean the mirror um, that's uh, pretty widely accepted. So I'm just gonna start from the middle because that smaller stroke is gonna use a little bit less of the cotton ball. And as I'm wiping across the mirror, I'm going to be rotating the cotton ball so that any debris gets caught and moved away from the mirror so it's not getting dragged across. So we're just gonna take our time. This is almost a meditative process. And that's the way you should treat it. Just go across. And I can already see a clean stripe in the mirror. And we're just using light strokes. We don't want to press down very hard and risk scratching. So just nice and gentle across the mirror. Oh, just missed a little spot right there. It's a really big one, so I'm going to just reuse it.
Super exciting stuff, huh, guys? And I just missed a little spot there. Okay, I'm just trying to look around for any spots I might have missed. Now that it's cleaned, the majority of the stuff is off. I'm just going to go back over it lightly. And this time, I'll reuse the cotton just a little bit. All right, that's pretty much it. So now, that is shiny, but I can see where we have bits of cotton, and you can see there in the edge of the water, the muck and grime that's kind of left. And that is where our distilled water is going to come in. We're gonna use this to rinse the edge of the mirror off or the face of the mirror, rather. And again, the idea is there's no minerals or impurities inside distilled water. So it's just going to rinse off. Now, while you're doing this, make sure you don't overfill your container. <laughs> okay. Okay. I set the mirror off to the side kind of propped up here so that the excess water can drain off and then we're going to take our tub of water here and empty that out so a couple of options here Let that water try to sheet off as best as it can. Now we're going to get a paper towel and we're going to use capillary action to pick up the excess water. So using the corner of the towel, if you'll just gently press it down onto the water spots and it will use capillary action to actually pick up the spot. Usually anywhere along the edge. Well, again, we don't want to wipe and scrape. So we can just tear off, kind of make new little edges here. Which will pick up our finer water spots here. And kind of move your head around to get different perspectives, different angles. But you can just keep tearing that off. And those fuzzy little edges 
we'll use capillary action to pick up our excessive water spots. Just lightly going across the surface. And then again, move your head around, change perspectives. Make sure you get it all. Some people use a blow dryer. It might not be too bad. The air may force some of the water off, but usually those rough edges, um, again, will pick up the water pretty well. Let me look. Well, that's pretty darn clean. Based on what we saw earlier, when I shine the light across it, you could see the dust showing, throwing a little bit of shadow. We got little tiny pieces of lint, um, but wow. What a profound difference. So if you want to, you can use your light and try to dust that stuff off. It's really not going to be that big of an issue, um, especially compared to where we came from here. So don't, uh, don't get obsessive because uh, <laughs> that's, that's when you can tend to kind of make mistakes. So I think we're going to call that good. All right, excellent. So next up, just reverse order, put everything back together. Okay, so we're gonna remember to line up our marks that we made with the Sharpie earlier, and then just slowly set this back down in here, nice and gentle. And then we can rotate that around. And then we have all these in the order that we took them off. And we're going to start all of these by hand. Always start your threads of any screws or bolts by hand so that you don't run the risk of cross setting. So we're going to go all the way around. I'm going to get all those put in uh, and then I'm going to run the screws down and then we're going to come back about how tight they should be. So we'll be right back. All right, so we got all of the mount back on, the screws run down, and then you'll notice that the mounts are still a little loose, which is what we want. And we don't want to actually tighten this down where it's actually holding the mirror firmly. Uh, if you do that, you're going to get something called pinch optics. So if you were to do that and look through the telescope, all the stars will take on kind of a triangular appearance, kind of like they're pinched, hence the name. So we're actually going to use something uh, familiar in the automotive industry, but we're using a business card as a feeler gauge. So we're actually going to stick this business card up under the mount. And it should just slide up under there. So this one's obviously a little bit on the tight side. Let's back that off. Business card should fit under there with some ease. So we're going to tighten that down until it's just starting to get a little bit of tension on that business card. Okay. And then we're going to move to the opposite side and do the same. And we're going to keep that pattern going until we have all of them done. So again, slide this up under here. And whenever you're tightening your, loosening or tightening your screws, whenever you go to run them, if you go to loosen them a little bit to get the card under there, just rotate them back uh, tight just a little bit because it kind of helps that tension to hold them. Okay, so now we're going to go opposite that one. Opposite that one. This one needs to be loosened a little bit. There we go. Opposite that one. And this uh, screw, I can tell uh, one side's a little too tight and the other side's a little too loose. So this side's a little too loose. There we go, and then last one. There we go. Now, you should still be able to move the mirror a little bit. It should still just have a a little bit of play. It'll actually be almost rattly in there. But that's correct. 
So there we are. Let's see if I can get that light in there. That's a pretty decent clean, about as good as we're going to get it. We don't want to do any aggressive scrub or anything. We just run the risk of scratching it. So while there might be a little bit of imperfections or a smudge or something stuck to it, that's fine. Like I said, don't get obsessive because that's when you're going to start messing it up. Okay, so next up, we just transport it back to the tube and reinstall it. So we'll be back. All right, we're back at the tube. We have our tape mark and our screw holes. So we're going to now gently and slowly put the mirror back in. And as I stated, before you walk the mirror over, go ahead and rewalk the path. Make sure you don't have any trip hazards or anything in your way. And then we're going to grab that mirror and just slowly invert it back into the tube. Take our time, take our time. There we are. That screw hole is perfectly lined up. So I'm going to go ahead and put the screws back in, get this thing set back up and ready for collimation. So we'll do that in another video coming up. Thanks so much for joining, guys. Well, we got the mirror clean. What a difference that made. But now we need to align all of the optics. So I'm going to show you how to collimate both mirrors. Now I will note, I didn't need to wash the secondary mirror, just the primary. The secondary is still plenty clean. All right, well, let's get started. Now we're going to do collimation. Now I know that this is something that reads rather critical and it certainly is for the optics to work well, but it's not challenging to do. It's actually rather straightforward. If you get one of these laser collimators, and this one was made by SV Boney, found this on Amazon for around $30, and it comes with an adapter to go from one and a quarter inch, which is what this is, to a two inch. So right now I have mine set up for two inch. We're just going to slide that in, make sure that we tighten the screw down. And then we have a target. So what this is going to do is aim a laser out of here. It's going to go into the eyepiece, hit the, the secondary mirror, bounce back to the primary mirror, and that little circle in the center of the primary mirror, we saw that earlier. And we're going to do that first. That's to line up the secondary mirror. And then we'll look, the laser's going to bounce back up and hit this wedged piece here that is a target. That is actually that hole in the middle is where the laser is coming out of. But we're going to try to get that laser to bounce back kind of into itself. And then our mirrors will be perfectly aligned and it'll make a profound difference whenever you're doing photography or just observing. Okay, so let me go ahead and get this lined up. And you're going to aim that little target that we saw towards the back. So we're going to have this target portion aimed towards the back of the telescope so that whenever we go to adjust the primary mirror, we can see the target. But first, we're just going to start by tightening that down. And then we're going to turn the laser on. And we'll now go and look down at the primary to see where the laser is hitting. Okay, so now we have the laser turned on. I'm going to try to zoom in down the end of the tube. Well, <laughs> there we go. You can see that circle there. See it? And then you can see the laser. So we want to line that laser up into that circle. That circle is dead center in the primary mirror at the back. So now I'm going to zoom back out so we can look at the end. And what we're going to do first is loosen this screw, which is what holds our adjustment in place for our secondary mirror. Oh boy, now we can see that laser really moving around. But now we're going to use these three adjustment screws, which are Allen keys. So I have to go get my Allens. But we'll use those Allen keys to move the secondary and then lock it back down with that center bolt. Okay, so now we have the Allen keys. We're going to adjust all these, and you can see that laser now hitting the edge of the mirror. So we're going to adjust these until we can get that laser in the dot. So let me zoom back down the barrel here. Hopefully y'all can see that. We're going to try to get the laser in that circle. Let me go ahead and turn up the brightness on the laser here, so y'all might be able to see it a little better. Really, once you learn the direction that these bolts make the laser travel, you really only have to adjust two of them usually.
Almost there. All right, I'll turn that brightness down so I can see a little better. Okay, so we're just on the edge of that circle. All right, well, that's almost perfect. We're gonna call it right there. I'm gonna get my Phillips and re-tighten that center screw. So we've been adjusting these with the Allen. I'm gonna take that out and then just very gently try to give this a little tighten and try to hold all this assembly nice and careful and just a little oomph. there we go pretty straightforward not hard to do at all now we're going to line up our primary so let's cruise on over to the back and we're going to be looking at our collimator. You see that laser, we need to make sure that it goes into that hole. So we're looking at that little target up there. And we're gonna put the laser inside that hole. Okay, so how we're gonna do that is we're going to use these adjustment screws on the back. So what we have here is our adjustment screws or the thumb screws, and then these are our set screws. So once we get that mirror where we want it, that's what locks it down. So again, these should not really be tight. They should be, I mean, I should be able to undo them with my finger, honestly. There we go. We're just going to back those off a couple of turns, and then we can use these to get our target lined up. So let's get back over here and I'm gonna have you all watch that while I adjust. Sorry about all the movement. Ah. Okay, so now we're gonna start adjusting. And again, just start screwing the different ones and see how they're gonna move that mirror. So that's moving it in. And really, usually you're only gonna to need to move two of them. Up. I'm gonna bring that back down so I can see it. I want that to be level with that line. And then I'm gonna go in. Boom, that's it. We are now in collimation and then I can turn my Locking screws. Oh, see that starts to put a little pressure on the mirror. So now I'm going to turn the other one and that puts pressure on the mirror back to go into the hole. And I'm going to lock the final one and make sure that that laser is still there. We are now locked in and we are collimated and that should last us for a little while. Now, the more we move around the telescope uh, traveling and so forth, the more often we'll need to do collimation. So I recommend just keeping this device with you uh, because it's pretty straightforward and painless to do. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Mm -hmm.